Hello and welcome to One on One. I am Elsie Godwin. My guest on this episode is one of the respected entertainment lawyers in Nigeria, Yemisi Falaye. She works with ECAS Law. Thank you for your time, Yemisi. Hi, Elsie. Thank you for having me. Okay, so practicing entertainment law in a place like Nigeria, first and foremost, what attracted you to media and entertainment law? Um, at the beginning of my practice as a lawyer, I was, in, I was called to that in 2005. I started practice almost immediately. Um, you know, the normal growing um, procedure, you have your too thin period where you go through pains and, you know, learn through the pains. Um, I started off with corporate commercial, intellectual property and all of that. And mm -hmm. in the midst of that, I um, created a niche for myself in the entertainment industry. Um, and then coupled with the fact that I have a few friends who are celebrities, you know, and um, most of them then usually come to me for legal assistance. And I just thought, okay, hi, let's, mm. let's do this. Let's try this. And it's been fun since then so far. So you mentioned intellectual property. Is there a significant difference between that and entertainment law? Well, there's a difference, but it is not so significant. Okay. Um, both are interwoven. As a matter of fact, um, intellectual property is a part of entertainment law. Mm -hmm. um, entertainment law is very wide, absolutely wide. It has everything in it, um, intellectual property being a part of it. However, intellectual property is a major, major part of um, um, entertainment law because the crux of entertainment law is copyright. And copyright mm -hmm. is part of entertainment, I mean, uh, intellectual property. Mm -hmm. you know, so as much as it is not different from entertainment law, it is still interwoven. You can't talk about entertainment law without referring to um, intellectual property. Mm. So yeah. to become an entertainment lawyer, is there some form of certification? Is there a different process to go through? What, what does it entail? No, I mean, there's no different um, process. It's just the basic go to um, uh, the university, study law, mm -hmm. go to the law school, wherever you want to practice. I'm practicing here in Nigeria, so I'm called to the Nigerian bar. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you come out of school, you um, go to a law firm that practices entertainment law or that um, will give you space to grow in the um, entertainment industry as a lawyer. So mm -hmm. there's really, although some people actually um, um, go for master's abroad, there's some uh, master's degree, degrees abroad, you know, in the UK, in the US, Canada, every other part of the world where they um, specialize in um, entertainment law, media, sports, and entertainment um, law, intellectual property for masters. Okay. So you can do that as an ad added advantage. But the most important thing is to obviously get called to bar to be able to practice as a do lawyer. Do we have that in Nigeria at the moment? Uh, not media and entertainment law, but you, you have some universities in Nigeria that um, offer intellectual property as a course on the master's level and on the um, undergraduate level. So it's not as specific as it is in the UK and the US, mm. especially. Okay, I was speaking to an entertainment lawyer and um, she said that to practice entertainment law and be very good at it, you have to have a level of passion or be very creative and understand the creative space. Would you think that would be necessary to be able to represent your clients properly? Uh, half right, half wrong. Okay. Wrong in the sense that you don't have to be creative. I can't sing to save my life. I can't act to save my life. Mm -hmm. I can't, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't write songs. I don't do any form of um, creative art. Yeah, but um, write in the sense that you need to be interested in entertainment law. You need to be interested in the entertainment field because um, it's a unique um, sphere of uh, life uh, because of the people you'll be dealing with. Creatives are a special breed. God has, you know, whatever they have is natural. Mm -hmm. So what we do on earth is to refine what God has given them naturally. So because of that, they are a unique type of people. And um, if you're not, um, if you're not passionate about them and what you do for them, you're going to get frustrated. Mm. You know, so you obviously have to have a passion for entertainment law, for you to be able to thrive um, swiftly. 
So how would you describe the level of knowledge in Nigeria when it comes to entertainment law and what it requires? There is growth. You know, um, before now, it, there was nothing like law in the entertainment industry. Um, people didn't even know that they have to document their relationship. People didn't know that they have to document their um, um, piece of work. You know, just go into the studio, for, for instance, as um, musicians, go into the studio, I can do beats, let's do beats, I can sing, let's sing, let's vibe, and that's it. But um, over time, people start get into trouble. Mm -hmm. And um, because of that, there's this sort of um, awakening in the, in the industry, especially with the stakeholders, the creatives. You know, and then um, with the likes of my firm, we noticed the, uh, the loophole in the industry regarding the legal part of it. And, you know, we decided to um, do something about it. What was the loophole noticed? <clears throat> the, well, basically, like I said earlier, people get into trouble mm -hmm. because they have not decided to, um, they failed to consult a lawyer before putting pen into paper. Um, sometimes out of desperation, you know, and they just go ahead and um, 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 hey, here is it, sign here. It's really nothing, you know, just go ahead, sign here, and um, it's time for you to blow. Mm -hmm. and because the artist wants to blow, just signs. And then a few months, a few years down the line, you get into trouble, and then you run to a lawyer, and the lawyer says to you, I'm sorry, fam, you're, you're, you're stuck. Nobody wants to get um, stuck. Nobody wants to be in a bondage forever. Mm -hmm. And in order to avoid that, they have seen that there's a need to always consult a lawyer before you even start to have verbal um, conversation with anybody. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Recently, um, I mean, an example of the fact that the industry is actually growing regarding <clears throat> the legal part of it. Recently, um, Obama Music World, in collaboration with Davido Music World, just recently signed a very young and um, extremely talented guy. He sings like, you know, um, he was made to do that. He's a good songwriter, young guy. And um, I did the paperwork on behalf of um, the record labels. And I was, uh, I was very, you know, um, elated. I was very happy when I got an email from the guy's lawyer, um, countering some of my points in the, in the agreement. I was, I was very excited, even though they were challenging what I've done, which I really don't like. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what they're supposed to do. But that's what they're, and I, mm -hmm. I greatly appreciated it. It was like, wow, it was like a you know, breath of fresh air for and me. And this, this is an upcoming artist as Yes, well. nobody even knows him yet. Great. You know, and he decided to consult a lawyer, a good one for that matter, we go on table as colleagues. I adjusted some, I pulled some things out because they would not allow me to put them in. I found that very impressive. And that's to show you that You're we're moving on. Yes. All right, let's go on a very quick break. But well, when we come back for this break, we'll talk about the challenges entertainment lawyers face in Nigeria. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Stay One on One on Plus TV Africa. With me here is Yemisi Falai, an entertainment lawyer. So before we went on that quick break, you were talking about the progress and how even an upcoming artist now understands that he needs a lawyer mm -hmm. to, before he puts pen to so, paper. Mm -hmm. So but as if someone practicing um, this form of law in this part of the world, what would you say is the peculiar challenge you faced or your kind faced in the industry? Um. Peculiar challenge is um, basically the fact that some people still don't get it. They will still wait to get into trouble mm -hmm. before they come to you, even though that is good news for me because it's more money for me mm -hmm. to get what I mean. But because of my passion for what I do and the people that I work with, I find it very painful when you see the, the pit Especially if a lawyer has told you, look, there's a pit here. If you go into it, you're going to get yourself injured. But out of desperation, you still go into it. And then you now look for a lawyer to bring you out of the pit. So lack of um, obedience, lack of uh, understanding, and um, lack of trust. Mm -hmm. 
uh, major challenges that we lawyers face in the industry because um, your client is about to sign a $1 million deal, like literally $1 million. And then you say to the client, look, if you sign this deal, 20 years down the line, you're going to get into trouble. Clients will wonder, why would you stop me from getting, why would you stop me from signing a $1 million deal? I'm not going to do that. He goes ahead to sign. Mm -hmm. And then there will be trouble. And because the client knows that you might stop him or her from signing this deal, she won't even come to you in the first place. Mm. Go ahead, sign, but then get into trouble and come back to you. But you said one thing. You said them getting into trouble and coming back to you is better money and good money. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So, and <laughs> one of the reasons um, the artists would say they don't involve lawyers is the idea that um, it is not affordable. Mm -hmm. So, for both from what you're saying now, it is actually cheaper mm -hmm. to get them involved from day one than when you get into trouble. So, how affordable is it actually considering the fact that some of these people are really not well-to-do? They mm -hmm. want to, like you said, blow. Mm -hmm. from this career and be able to make a living. Mm -hmm. So how affordable um, is the services of an entertainment lawyer? So I'm going to you know, give you a background of how we started practice as a standalone in my firm. Okay. Now, my firm, Adepetu, Kaksu Martin, Zagman Shegun, Ekaslo, we are one of the best in top four law firms in Nigeria. In, as, well, maybe top 10 in Africa. We are big. However, we, we decided to stoop low when we made the decision to go into entertainment law full on as a standalone. And what did we do? Most of the clients we had, we were working for them pro bono. And we will do the work as though they are paying us $1 million as retainer because we understood the, the challenges of the industry. Like you said, most of them usually don't have the financial means to afford a lawyer. But here we are, one of the best law firms in Africa, offering you our services free of charge. We do that. And we still, to some level, we still do that. We tell people, we will work in my firm, we tell people we will work with your budget. Whatever your budget is, let us know. We'll work with you. In my firm, relationship is what matters the most. Mm -hmm. When you come in, you're not working out because you can't afford us. And you will not even work out, as a matter of fact. Because I was going to say, you work out because our services are bad. But that's never the case. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? So as much as a lawyer wants to look good, like I'm looking good now, it's not cheap, we are still very much open to helping you grow. We grow with people. Mm -hmm. We were, you know, once down, we started from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we understand the, you know, humble beginning. But this is your law firm now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the general industry, the entertainment lawyers in general. So I'm not sure I can speak for any <laughs> other person. <laughs> so I want to, I want to sign a document. And you I as know. LC or you as um, a creative? Me as a creative. Okay. I want to sign a document. If it's you as Elsie, mm -hmm. that means I'm going to get rich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's not get into that part. But as a creative, mm -hmm. you want to sign a document and mm -hmm. you know that you need the services of a lawyer. Mm -hmm. How affordable can that be for the average up-and-coming artist, not the artist that is from a rich home or has sponsors and all that? The average up-and-coming artist. A reasonable human being will help you if you are willing, if you have shown enough passion to be helped. Mm. So it's not expensive. Okay. It's just all about relationship, showing how passionate you are about what you want to do, mm -hmm. and appreciating the efforts of the lawyer. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't think it's, it's expensive. It's expensive. No, it's not. Okay, good, we've established the fact that you need a lawyer from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But what if you find yourself in this situation like you are, the claws are there mm -hmm. and you need to get yourself out. What are the steps to take? Just get a lawyer. That's the only step. Mm. Get a lawyer. But in that, at that point, get a lawyer and make money. Because 
if you have the opportunity to save yourself from getting into the pit or getting wounded by the claws and you didn't explore that opportunity, well, you might as well just face the consequences mm. by paying extra to get yourself out of the mess. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it from the angle of the investors now, not just the artists. So you find artists who sign, sorry, investors who sign up artists mm -hmm. and as time goes on, they realize they can't actually get the artists to abide by the terms of their contracts. Mm -hmm. What are the implications um, to the investor and also the artist? <laughs> what I tell people is that once you sign an agreement, you are absolutely bound by the provisions of the agreement. So that's why it is always important as an artist to read and thoroughly understand um, what you're getting yourself into. Even as an investor, you need to understand because some people just, it's not about having money. It's about knowing what, what to do with the money. You know, some people just think they have money. Well, you need 15 million, okay? So let's, I have 15 million. You have the talent. Let's, let's merge both and let's create magic. It's not usually that straightforward. Mm. As an investor, you need to have the um, resources in place to help you um, use your money wisely. And as the artist, you need to understand what you're getting yourself into. An investor is a businessman. He's putting down money to make with money. the hope, exactly, mm -hmm. with the hope of you know making money. So you can't afford to back off halfway. Okay. Let's go on a quick break, but when we come back, we'll definitely carry on this conversation. So before we went on that break, we were talking about the investor side of it. So I also would like to know, is there a part of the law that protects the artist, regardless of what you have signed? Is there any provision in the law to actually protect them when they do things out of ignorance? Um, unfortunately, not. So, so the thing is, there are laws, but then again, whatever you agree on paper has to has to has to be what you would work with. Um, ignorance of the law is not an excuse, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, even though there are some, I mean, technical parts of 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 the law that can, you know, get you out of some mess. That is why you will find um, a lawyer defending someone who has obviously stolen, or someone mm -hmm. who has obviously killed somebody, you know. Um, but that's left for the lawyer to work out the technicalities that would, you know, save you. But if a lawyer is going to go through that stress for you, it's going to cost you more money. Mm. Because the lawyer has to work out, I mean, think out of the box, do a lot of research, and then come up with something that will save you. But in most cases, you usually don't have an escape route. In most cases, you are always stuck. So I'll say it over and over again, from the get-go, get things right so you don't get stuck. Hmm. So when we talk about entertainment law, maybe because we have too many record label and artist battle, our mind just goes to music. Mm. But this covers Nollywood also, film um, produ production and all that. What would you say is the difference in this two major areas of entertainment in Nigeria in understanding entertainment law? Now, you know, like you said earlier, because um, we've had a lot of record label artist tussle, mm -hmm. uh, especially legal tussle, um, the awareness in the music industry is wow. actually higher to some extent than in the movie industry. The movie industry too has its own um, um, challenges. Um, script writers having issues with producers, um, uh, um, actors having issues with producers, um, copyright ownership, and all of those stuff. They have their own challenges. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't think um, they have created enough awareness regarding um, law in the movie industry as much as has been done in the, I mean, the music industry. Now, aside, you know, 
the artist's record label tussle in the music industry, we find out that most of the record labels abroad, the international eyes are on the music industry. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, lawyers are busy as against in the movie industry. They are there, but they are not there yet as much as the music industry guys are. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to also cover almost every part before we go, because time is not on our side, but right. bringing copyright law, intellectual property, to social media, which is like our new biggest tool now. Mm -hmm. How much of our law covers this area? And um, would you say people are abiding um, to it? People, you wouldn't have it. There are some platforms that will not allow you infringe on people's um, intellectual property rights. You know, at the beginning of the interview, I said to you, um, copyright is the crux of um, entertainment law. Mm -hmm. And um, um, there are some platforms that don't joke with copyrights, including Instagram. They will pull down some songs or pull down your account because you are infringing on some people's copyrights. The most common is YouTube. If you do anything infringing on anybody's copyright, if anybody files a copyright um, action against you on YouTube, they pull down the they pull down your content immediately. Mm -hmm. So people are actually forced to abide by the rules of copyright all over the world, mm. Nigeria inclusive. So moving forward, what would you say people should pay more attention to? You know, in order to um, reduce, I always tell my, my people, in order to reduce the stress of you and then in order for you to be able to explore your talent, just get a lawyer. It's just, that's, that's it. That's simple. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so looking at the rise of creatives in Nigeria, I mean, it's... It's a big industry. You we're talking music, Nollywood, there's a part of um, the painting, the a whole lot of it's going on. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Do we have enough entertainment lawyers to cover this um, industry at the moment? No, we don't. So what, what is going on? Is there going to be more? Because I believe if there are more, then it will probably be easier for these people to know who to run to and how maybe it even becomes more affordable. So yeah. Is there any form of training, any form of um, negotiations to have even entertainment law in Nigeria, just like it is in those countries you mentioned? Um, you know, for um, entertainment law in Nigeria is still a growing, a growing child. You know, so we find out that most of the lawyers don't even have a full grasp. You know, don't have a full understanding of what entertainment law entails and how to deal with um, creatives. Um, like I said, the space is still very empty. We don't, we don't have, I can, I'm not sure I can count up to 20 lawyers that practice entertainment law in Nigeria, no. you know, and then it's just reason being just that um, the area, that area of law is still very gray in Nigeria and like the other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, but with the, my firm, for instance, we have actually paved the way for other big law firms to start entertainment law practice. Mm. And um, I see it happening. A lot of other law firms are also, you know, joining, they're joining us. They're right behind us yes. in, the, in, the, in the industry you know, regarding the um, entertainment law. So we are not there yet, but give us a couple of years, five years perhaps, You'll see, we'll, we'll turn things around in the industry. Okay, finally, before you go, you've been described as not just um, the legal representatives of these celebrities, but also as their friend. Mm -hmm. So as their friend, what would you say is the difference between the part of them we see as showbiz and who they really are? Uh, well, I mean, that's one thing that actually interests me mm -hmm. in um, uh, this creative. And I'll talk about two people that are that I've been close to, you know, who are extremely different from what everybody thinks they are. The first one is Chidima. Mm. Chidima is a very she a sense of humor is overwhelming. She's extremely funny. She's fun to be with, and um, she speaks Yoruba like like. She was born to, to do it. But people don't know that side of her. And I find that very intriguing. 
another person is Zlatan. People think Zlatan is this crazy guy that you know, just likes to make trouble. But on the contrary, Zlatan is a church boy. Oh, Zlatan, wow. yes. Zlatan is one of my friends that will I wake up in the morning and find my WhatsApp messages from him, WhatsApp with almost 10 lines praying for me. Okay, now mm -hmm. that's quite interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time <laughs> and revealing that. All right, it's been an interesting conversation with Yemi C. Falaye, who is an entertainment lawyer. She's been speaking with us about the entertainment law in Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Mm -hmm.